Hey traders, welcome back to the channel. My name is Matthew from The Art of Trading, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you a brand new PineScript feature that has unlocked a whole world of new capabilities. But before I do that, I wanna apologize that it's been a while since the last video. I've been really busy the past few weeks with family stuff, but I'm back to work now. And before we get into today's lesson, I just wanna tease next week's video, where I'm going to break down the script you see on my chart, which is a monthly performance table. And what this table here is doing is breaking down my strategy test data on a month by month and year by year basis. And it's showing me the total return for each year, the max drawdown for each year. Um, all these numbers here are percentage returns for each month. So here we have a 2.34% gain. Here we have a minus 3.9% loss. And then this column here is the intra year drawdown. So the worst drawdown the system experienced throughout the year. And then down here we have some performance metrics that aren't given by the default trading view strategy tester, such as our compounded annual growth rate, our max drawdown for the entire system on a realized equity basis. I'll explain what that means in next week's video. Uh, we have our MAR ratio, which gives us an indication of the pain to gain ratio of the system. So in other words, how much money did we make versus how much did we suffer to make that money? Every system has some point of suffering and the whole point of trading is to balance the suffering with the gain. And this MAR ratio can give you a really quick indication of how good the system is. So this system here isn't fantastic. Ideally, you wanna see a MAR ratio well above 0.5. Um, but anyway, we'll cover all of this in next week's video when I have time to record it. You honestly have no idea how long it took to build this tool out. It took several weeks of intense head scratching and dozens of coffees, but I got it done and I'm really excited to release it to you guys next week. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so that you don't miss next week's lesson. For those of you who are in the mastery course, the source code of the script is already up in there. So go and check that out if you're a mastery course student. There'll be a link below in the video description and pin comment. So anyway, with all of that out of the way, let's get to the content of today's lesson. And that is this brand new update from the TradingView team. And we can now connect our scripts to more external inputs. This unlocks a whole new world of possibilities. So I'll just quickly read through this. We're very happy to announce that our indicator on indicator feature now supports multiple external inputs up from the previous limit of one. These multiple external inputs can even originate from different indicators. So here's a sample strategy script with two input source calls and the default inputs are the low and high of price action. But you could, for example, link this strategy with sources from the session volume profile. So let's copy this code and I'll show you what that means. So let's apply this code to my chart. So with the default settings, we're just entering long and short after price crosses the low and high. Uh, but what we can do now is if I throw on the volume profile, which is here, session volume profile, and we drop down to say a five minute chart, we can now come up to the settings menu of this um, strategy script and change our sources to the session volume profile developing high and developing low. And now I can hide the session volume profile and we can see that we have a script that is entering long and short whenever price action closes above or below the volume profiles high and low. Here's a good example. Price closed below the volume profile low for that session and we entered short. So this is a really cool and really powerful feature. Now you can see I can use the price source or the, the number value from any indicator that I have added onto my chart including closed source indicators. So that's where things get really interesting. So what I mean is if you find a script on the TradingView script library that is closed source, so you can't actually see the source code, you can actually use this feature to reference values that that closed source indicator generates. Now at the end of this video, I'll demonstrate how that works. But before we do that, let me cover another really valuable use case of this new feature, which is adding alert functionality to scripts that don't have it. So let's get rid of this strategy for a moment. And for this example, I'm going to use my dynamic structure indicator. Now this indicator automatically detects or attempts to detect support resistance zones in the markets, major swing lows and swing highs that create um, levels of structure. This script happens to be um, open source. So if I add this to my chart, here you can see the script is detecting the most recent support and resistance zones. Now in this case, my script is open source and it also has alert functionality. So if I select my alerts, I can detect when resistance is touched or uh, price breaks through it. But what if this script was closed source and didn't have alerts? That's where this new um, indicator on indicator or indicator value sources comes into play. So for this example, I'm going to copy this source code, create a new script, paste that source code in, and I'm going to delete all of these alert 
conditions. Save the script, remove the original script and add this one to my chart. Now, if I come up to the alert dialog and select the script, there is no option to select the inbuilt alerts. And now let's say I wanted to detect when price is rejected from this resistance zone. Let me open up the Pine Editor, open a new script. I'll call this DSI Rejection Alerts. And what I can do here is add a add two price sources, input.source. I'll give it a default value of close and a title of source one. Copy this and name this source two. And now let's say, let's create a new Boolean value here called signal. And uh, signal is going to be true if the current bar's high is greater than source one and the current bar's high is lower than source two and the current bar's close is lower than source one. Now what this should detect is a bar that's high falls within these two red lines, but its closing price falls below this bottom line. And that will detect a rejection from this zone. And so now I can plot shape signal. Uh, I'll give it a title of cell, uh, style of shape dot triangle down, location of location dot above bar, and a color of color dot red. And we'll give it text of cell. And now if I save my code, hopefully this compiles, uh, I need to set overlay to true. Um, actually, before we continue, let me also plot source one with a color of color dot red and source two with a color of red as well. Save that code. Let's hide the original script, the dynamic structure indicator. And now if I come up to the settings of this new script, I can actually select from this drop-down box any indicator value that I have added to my chart. I can reference any of these values in my script, regardless of whether I have access to the source code of that script. So let me select R1 and R2 here. So I've actually got these around the wrong way. I need this to be R2 and this to be R1. And now you can see that we're detecting rejections from within this uh, automatic dynamic resistance zone that's being detected by my DSI script. And I can do this regardless of whether I have access to the uh, indicator source code or not, which is really powerful. Let me show you another example. So here I've just gone onto the TradingView script library and found a random script that is closed source. So here you can see it's a protected script, it's closed source. So we can use it freely, but I can't see the source code to the script. I can't see how these moving average zones are being calculated. So let's add this script to my chart. Moving average zone indicator, here it is. Now notice I can't see the source code to the script, but if I bring up my Pine editor and paste in some code I wrote up earlier, add this to my chart and hide the MAZI indicator. Now if I come up into the settings menu of my script here, I can select moving average zone indicator bottom and indicator top. And now you can see that my script is drawing the exact same moving average values of this closed source script and also detecting hammer candles within that zone. So I'll quickly go over the source code here. We've just got a standard indicator script. I'm importing my Zen library just because it makes it really easy to detect hammer candles without having to write out a bunch of candlestick pattern checks here. We've got two price inputs. They're set to close by default, but we need to override these to the MAZI indicator here, which I've already done. Then we're detecting hammer candles. So is the current bar a hammer candle? So a candle that looks like this with a large wick to the downside and a small body on top. And is the open of this candle above this lower band? And is the open below this upper band? So we need the bar to have opened within the band in order to be detected as a valid hammer signal. Then we're just drawing the Mazzy low and high and drawing a shape below any hammer signals. And we're also adding alert conditions to this signal. So if I come up to my alerts dialog, I can select Mazzy signals. This is my script. And here we have buy signal. And so this will trigger an alert whenever a hammer signal is detected. Again, all based on a script that I don't have the source code to. Now, in order to do this, I need to keep the original script on my chart, the source script on my chart at all times. You can hide it so that you don't see its values being plotted, but you need to have it added onto your chart so that this script can reference that script. Now notice if I remove this Mazzy script, it'll say, do you really want to delete study and all of its children? This script is now a child of the Mazzy script. If I click yes, we lose our script from our chart. Now that's just a couple of 
somewhat useful uh, applications of this new indicator on indicator feature. But one really cool ability of this new feature is being able to create strategy scripts based on other people's closed source indicators. So again, using the Mazzy script, let me copy over some code that I wrote earlier. Now this code is identical to the code I just showed you with one major difference. It is now a strategy script that buys the market whenever a hammer is detected within that Mazzy zone. So now if I save this script and add it to my chart and I add back on the Mazzy indicator, I can hide the Mazzy indicator, come up to my settings, select bottom and top. And now we have a strategy script that is buying these hammer candles and selling whenever price closes above this upper band. So it's somewhat of a mean reversion uh, system that we've written here. And now it's not very profitable, but that's not the point. But if you took the time to code out a proper system based on a closed source script that you like, it is possible to create a profitable system out of this. So this was just a really quick um, example script I threw together. Here you can see that over the past 48 trades on the daily chart, it has been profitable slightly. If we go over to a stock market and cycle through a few, we're unlikely to find any to be very profitable because this is such a simple script. Um, but here we go, 107% return over 59 trades with a 33% max drawdown. Now this is completely random because this script is so simple, but hopefully you get the idea. I've created a strategy script here based on a completely different indicator um, that is buying based on indicator conditions on that other indicator and selling uh, whenever price closes above this upper band or below this lower band, which is why this trade exited here. Now there's a few other random applications of this new feature. So for example, I could create an RSI indicator that is based on volume, for example. So now we have an RSI that is calculating its values based on volume, which is not necessarily an unreasonable method for detecting spikes in volume. Now I think this particular feature has been in PineScript for a while, but the real improvement of this latest update is the fact that we can reference uh, multiple indicator values now as source inputs in our scripts. In my opinion, the most useful application of this new feature is being able to reference the indicator values of closed source scripts. Now, this also means that for those of you who like to automate your scripts through a tool like Pine Connector, for example, you can now do so even if you don't have access to the source code of the script. So if it's a closed source script, but it's publicly available, to add to your chart. With this new feature, you can actually add automation through the use of a secondary script that references the values that the first script generates. Now, depending on the script, this could be quite a simple thing to do, or it could be very complex, but theoretically, this should be possible to achieve with any closed source script. So if you know of a closed source script or strategy that interests you, that you've wanted to automate, let me know in the comments section below. And if I find time, maybe I'll do a video showing how to add Pine Connector automation capabilities to a closed source script. Now this method will only work on public scripts that are closed source, private scripts that require um, authorization to access will not work with this method. But there are quite a number of closed source scripts on the TradingView script library that are very useful for certain use cases. And many students in the mastery course have reached out to ask me how they can reference closed source values. In the past, this was impossible, but now it is possible. So anyway, with all that said, I'll wrap this video up here. I'll speak with you next week where we will be breaking down the source code to this performance table that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already because I think you're going to love next week's lesson. With all that said, take care, best of luck with your trading. I'll speak with you then.